Hi, it's Jane from craftwithjane.co.uk and today I'm taking part in the Stamp Around UK video hop and the theme is three neutrals and a bright. Um, so it's looking at three colours from the neutral family and one from the bright. So uh, my project is this cute little notebook, uh, sorry, note card holder and it's in the style of a book. So I'll just show you here, sort of it reminds me of a little book. So when I was creating it, I was thinking of lots of boxes to hold note cards and I thought, oh, I like the idea of a book note card. So um, this note card holder, sorry. So this is um, you open it up like this and it's got a lovely little sentiment inside. And I've used one stamp set throughout and then it's got four little note cards inside. Just a note. Thank you. Sending a card instead of a text and happy birthday. So those are the four little note cards. And then it's got these decorated envelopes as well to match. And again, using the same stamp set. So I just thought it was a really cute little project. You could make it with all the same sentiment and size. So you could make it all with like just a note and then it would become a just a note card uh, box. So, but I like the idea of using different um, sentiments so that uh, somebody could have like a cute little gift but also really versatile um, cards to just grab when they needed to. So that is today's project. So I've used the Flowing Flower stamp set for this and I've used quite a lot of the flowers. I've used almost all of the sentiments. I've used just a note, happy birthday, thank you and sending a card instead of a text. So the only two I've missed out is I like you and time for a happy dance. I've used mainly these two flowers as well. So I feel like I've used quite a lot of this set, which is um, really versatile and very good set to have. The colors that I've used. So to meet the challenge, the colors that I've used are three of these grays from the neutrals. So that's Smoky Slate, Basic Gray and Gray Granite. And the color from the bright that I've used is Melon Mambo. Okay, so for the inner box layer just here, which is the bit that houses the cards, um, I've used this uh, piece of cardstock, which is basic grey, and it measures five and a quarter by nine and a half. All of my measurements will be on my blog, and I obviously always put metric on there for you as well, so it'll be in centimetres. So on this one, um, I'm going to score half an inch. Oops, half an inch, careful there. Got to be excited. There you go, half an inch. So uh, one and a quarter, five, and five and three quarters. And then I'm going to turn it, and on the short side, I'm going to score it at three quarters. So the next piece of cardstock I need to score which is Smoky Slate, and this is the outer wrap of the box. So it's this uh, cardstock just here that wraps around to create the book style. Um, and this measures five and a quarter by eight and five eighths. And I'm going to score this just on the long side. I'm going to score it at three and seven eighths and at four and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know why I put six eighths. That's three quarters, isn't it? Sorry. There you go. So four and three quarters. Perfect. So you could score it at um, three and seven eighths, and then you could turn it and do three and seven eighths because you need it to match up. So by doing that, you'd be if you cut your paper slightly off, it would be absolutely certain that it would match up. Okay. So that is the scoring done. Okay. So I'm going to come in now and do my cutting. So I do often like to cut before I do my scoring. I just personally find it a bit easier I'm not sure why and obviously it gives you the opportunity as well to have a um, look at the template so it's quite it's just a basic box shape on the bottom and the top gets left open so I'm just snipping down here and mitering that's perfect and then I'm going to, you can either die cut or if you've got a um, circle punch, you could use that. And I think for ease of the video, I'm going to use a circle punch, which is just the two and a quarter inch one here. However, you could very easily use your um, 
layering circle dies and you just put the die in running through your die cutter so i need to work out where this is going to go because i don't really want it showing so that would mean my best option would be to punch this one just here but you know that would only be it wouldn't matter if you punched it the other way as well so i'm going to eyeball it and i'm going to look between i'm going to try and get it matched edges just there so probably about like that and punch and that gives you just the little groove to be able to um, pull the cards out just a little bit simpler right so now i'm going to get my bone folder out and burnish so um, so when i was thinking up these projects these are definitely colors that i wouldn't normally use it's um i wouldn't normally use three from the neutrals i do love um the neutrals collection um but i wouldn't uh, normally I've picked three colours all from there so it was quite interesting when I was coming up with the colour scheme for this but I do love greys with um, pinks personally I just think they look so lovely together okay so now I'm going to put some tear and tape just on this part of the box just here and that will then give me the grip there we go perfect to stick that together and that is there brilliant so you could decorate this as well but i personally preferred it plain but there would be nothing at all stopping you from stamping this if you wanted to if you're going to stamp it you could just stamp this front and the side layers just here okay so next i'm going to need to put this in i'm going to use some liquid glue for this because it might need to wiggle a little bit going to pop those bits there look at the front so i'm going to get this bit in first just there press that down for a second and then i'll pop some glue on this just section just here there we go and then i'm gonna fold this down try not to get glue on my fingers which is my favorite trick that i do so i'll press this down and I'll allow that to dry then Okay, so this is the inner box layer just here um, and I've used to create the cards, I've used these basic white note cards and envelopes, um, which are amazing. You get 20 in a pack. So I've used four of the note cards and envelopes and I've already pre-made these. Um, so they're just here. Um, so just the same as I did before, I have um, created uh, layers for the card. I've cut out sentiments and I've used grey granite uh, ribbon here so this is my grey granite usage which is the ribbon on the cards just here and I've stamped the backs of the envelopes as well so these are the four cards that I'll be using so if we just and the four envelopes which I've decorated up oh three there am I missing an envelope there we go there we go lost an envelope there so four envelopes four cards and I'll just double check that, that fits so i've made this specifically to fit that amount of cards so um this is the uh, second piece of cardstock that we scored and i just need to burnish this and this is in smoky slate so i'm just gonna literally burnish this in just like this lovely so now i'm going to try and line it up as best i can on the halfway mark just here so maybe I'll do it that way, actually, that might be better. There okay, that looks kind of perfect, doesn't it? Is that halfway? Right, so I've lined this up just here, which is on the grid, you can see, and I'm using that to be able to attach my ribbon. So I'm just going to pop a piece of tear and tape just here. And I'm gonna do the same on this side, just like that going to help me get my ribbon straight and I've got this beautiful white ribbon here and it's from the trio ribbon pack in the annual catalogue which I'm going to a link but lovely little combo so that very economical that you get three ribbons and it's quite a, a good price for that and I love it I love the whole set but I particularly love this white ribbon it's beautiful it just looks so lovely okay so I'm going to need, need a little bit of a tail there just because we're going to be tying a ribbon, a bow, lovely, and I'll just press that down, 
There we go. That's lovely. And I'll cut that. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of wastage here, guys, because I'm going to have to cut too much just to make sure I've got enough to tie the bow. So that's just there. OK, I'll put that to one side and I've got my two layers that I need to stamp just here now. And these layers measure three and five eighths by five and an eighth. And I'm going to do a little bit of stamping. So I've got my main flower stamp out of the flowing flowers and I've got my Whisper White pigment ink just here. So I'm just going to stamp up. There we go. And then I'm going to just do a little bit of uh, stamping here. So I'll start just here. There we go. I'm just going to stamp all around this stamp set like this. And I'm going to pop one in just there. There we go. And there we go. Just stamp probably up here. Excellent. And I'll do some more stamping on this one. So I'm going to stamp down here. And then I'm going to allow these time to dry. And I will then use uh, my melon mambo colour which is the one out of the brights to decorate there we go so those are so this is how i decorated the card fronts as well so i'll get rid of my ink just there and i'll just give that a few minutes to dry okay so i'm gonna use the melon mambo watercolor pencil and i'm gonna do some coloring so where it's picked up the white in the middle i'm just gonna do some gentle line strokes i'm not pressing too hard because i want very even though i'm using a bright i want a very subtle sort of um color towards the center of the flower and if you notice i've got strokes that are sort of coming outwards as if they're coming from the center of the flower there and I just think it makes it look quite sweet. It's quite subtle, um, but uh, I like I like the effect that it gives. So yeah, just do a little bit in the centre there because it just feels a bit too lined. There you go. And um, I'll do this for both of the cards because it does um, give a really lovely little effect I just think it looks so sweet and um, I really do love a pink with greys and that's sort of the finished effect simple as that so we'll do it again here so you can use pens on this but with this white pigment ink I just think this effect with this pencil is simple um, but it just looks so pretty and it's quite subtle, considering it's a bright colour, which is nice. And if you sort of do it at a side angle, it tends to... So that one looks more liney, and this one less so. I actually quite like the lines in it as well, so I might go over this one. And you can build it up, basically, as well. So you're kind of creating, creating lovely coloured layer at the centre of the flower, which just gives it a um, lovely feel to it. Lovely. So those are my two layers and I've used the Melon Mambo colour for that. So I'm now going to um, stick my two layers to the front of the box. So I'm actually going to use glue for this. I'm going to use my Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue because I need really good um, adherence to this. And when this is dried, it does stick really well. Also has a little bit of manoeuvrability, which when I'm doing anything like this, I quite like. So I'll pop this one on first. So the layer should give a little bit of a sort of surround 
to it because it is the same paper on the same paper it just allows me to hide the ribbon uh, but give it a little bit of a feature as well and I'll do the same with this one just here And that is just allowing that same little surround. There we go. And I'll give that a second to dry as well. Okay, I think this is dried now. This is the sentiment I've chosen, which is just a note to imply that it's a box of note cards. Um, I've used this die, the uh, basic white cardstock here, I've used um, the pretty pillow box dies. And for the background in the basic grey, I've used the tasteful touches dies. And I've stamped it in basic grey as well. So I'm going to look to see where I would like it. So I could have it there or I could turn it around and have it there. And I think I prefer it this way. So uh, to decorate this up, I'm going to put some tear and tape in the back of here, just straight across. And I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to get, get out my grey granite ribbon again to do a tiny little feature behind, oops, behind the sentiment. Like that, maybe. And then one more, I'll have it coming off at the side. So I'm going to turn it over and just see what that looks like. That looks fine. I think this one's a bit too long. So let's have a, see if I can get that off there and just shorten that one up a little bit. Okay, and then I'll trim that down. So trim this one a little bit. Perfect. And then trim this one. So how does that look? Yeah, quite like that. Oops, a little bit extra there. Yep, yeah, quite like that. So I'm going to turn this back over and I'm going to stick some tear and tape just on here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I kind of want to fix this ribbon in place, basically. And I'm going to press it down firmly. I will use some Stampin' Dimensionals to put this on, but I'll just leave it like that for now. And then I'll finish decorating it up uh, once I've got this uh, box together. Right, so now I know that's going to be my front. So this is going to be my back. So I now need to glue my box into place. I'm going to leave a tiny lip around the box, I think. So I'm going to use some of my Tumbo Multipurpose Liquid Glue again. This is strong when it dries, and I'm going to make sure I glue the entire of the back, and then I'm going to try and place it where I would like it to sit. So it just gives me, I'm just going to close it up, make sure that fits, because I do want it quite snugly in place. Yeah, that's perfect, lovely. So that creates that lovely box shape. So now I'm just going to press this down to allow it and use my bone folder just to make sure that it does grip well. And I'm just going to allow that tiny bit of time to dry. Okay, so now I'm going to glue the side in. So, so the back is not completely dry yet, but it's uh, almost there. So I'm going to glue the side in by holding this over and pressing, pressing down. So I'm holding the back on and I'm pressing down. Lovely. And I'll use my bone folder just to apply some pressure here. Great. Okay, so I've got my inner layer, which I have actually pre-stamped with basic grey. So it's just a basic white cardstock and it's the same layer as the layers on the front. Uh, so it is three and five eighths by five and an eighth. I've stamped it with the, um, one of the other flowers and I've used the sending a card instead of a text, which I just thought was quite, quite oops, sorry, which I just thought was quite an appropriate uh, little sentiment. You can see that I stamped it slightly off on the back. So what did I do? I just turned it over and started again. 
there we go so I'm going to turn this on here and I'm going to just put this sentiment layer into place there we go lovely so that's the sentiment layer for inside the box and that has created my book box shape so I'll pop my cards in so I've got my you can now you can see how I've decorated the front so I've got my happy birthday my thank you my just a note and my sending a card instead of a text and I've already pre-stamped my envelopes as well so I've got my four envelopes there yep lovely pop this just in here and then I can do my little bow, which I kind of want to get slightly to the front so it sort of rides at the edge just here. And then I can trim off my excess bits of um, ribbon. This one's got a slightly cuter bow. There we go. Right, slightly smaller bow. And then I will trim just here. And that sort of balances out that bow quite nicely. And that's just on the side. There we go. Lovely. Now I'll pop the sentiment layer on the back. So I'm going to remove the tear and tape that I've put just here. Because of the ribbon, I do want to pop this up a little bit because it's the only area that I can afford to pop anything up. So I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals. So I wouldn't do this on any of the cards be simply because I do need, I need the cards to remain as flat as possible to fit more into the box. And if I'm posting them through the mail, you can't really put too much bulk in. Well, you can, but you just need to protect the cards a little bit because um, they sometimes go through franking machines if they're thin enough and you don't want the jewels and the bits that are popped up to be ripped off. Okay, so I'm going to put that, eyeball it as straight as I can. I'm always using the grid behind me to double check as best I can. And I'm gonna press that down. And then I've got my rhinestone basic jewels. And oops, I'll put them in the front here. And I'll just pop two of the little ones in the corner. You can put as many of these on as, as you want. But I love doing this with this. I always do this with this um, shape from the Pretty Pillow Box dies because I don't know why, it just reminds me of rivets either side, like glossy, sparkly rivets. So I just love that. I do hope you've enjoyed the project today. Um, I've made these cute little book style note cards. I do love the look of it. It just has like a vintage feel to it. And I do love books. Um, I originally made a few other sort of demos for projects that uh, for boxes that could hold the note cards, but I just felt this one just looks so whimsical. And I thought it really suited the flowing flower stamp set. Um, so I've taken part in the Stamp Around UK video hop today. And the brief, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, to have three neutrals and one bright. So my three neutrals were grey granite, basic grey, smoky slate, and my bright was melon mambo. This one here, I didn't, I, I just used two. So I used grey granite, basic grey, and I think I used flirty flamingo in the pencil. But they are quite similar in colour and you can barely notice any difference. Um, I will link all of the products that I've used in the description below. So if you don't already have a Stamping Up demonstrator and you would like to shop with me, um, please uh, follow the links below. There'll also be a shop with me button. I would be very grateful if you chose me to be your demonstrator. I do send out thank you cards and I will also send out gifts to qualifying orders and for people who use my host code, which you'll find on my website. I'll also put uh, below the links to the other amazing demonstrators that are also taking part in the Stamp Around UK video hop challenge this month. So um, once you've watched this video, please uh, do um, take a look below in the description and follow the links on to my uh, lovely creative fellow demonstrator and friends. So I'm going to say bye for now and happy crafting.